let's maybe look at the person who has a job, right? Decent job, but it's steady paycheck based on you know fixed amount of uh, working hours that they do, that can be characterized maybe as a career for a lot of people. How should they be thinking about this? As an intrapreneur, what's an intrapreneur? An intrapreneur is someone that works inside of an organization, but what they do is they abandon this time and effort industrial age economy where you just punch a clock, you show up, and you trade time for dollars. Mm -hmm. And instead, they start considering how they contribute to the bottom line of the organization. And rather than being an owner, because ownership a lot of times means, hey, if you're sued, now you're involved in that lawsuit. Hey, if you need to add a capital call because they're short on cash that month, you gotta infuse cash. Mm -hmm. If all of a sudden things are tight, you're not taking your paycheck. There's not a lot of people that have kind of the desire to do that. And so they can be entrepreneurial where they say, I'd like to have more upside potential. Mm -hmm. If I can contribute more to this firm, if I can contribute and understand how I direct and improve the bottom line, I'd like to have a little piece of that. Mm -hmm. So now they're part of a community, they're part of a culture, they're part of an organization where they could thrive. See, some people that are more engineering minded and methodical don't love starting a business because they think of all the number of things that most business owners, we have enough you know, ignorance and arrogance to just plow through and then we deal with it when it comes up. Mm -hmm. They're pretty smart to see that ahead of time. A lot of times they can thrive within an organization. Um, and I really feel like we're in this economy right now where it doesn't take massive amounts of money to start a business. There's so many people that have side hustles, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I have people I know that they rented out two rooms in their house through Airbnb and that started cash flowing and they bought their first real estate property that was for a rental. Mm -hmm. I know other people that said, hey, I have good artistic you know, quality, so I'm gonna go and put my services on different online platforms and all of a sudden they're getting clients and they, they do that work, graphic work at night, right? So there's so many things and platforms that great entrepreneurs have brought to us that an entrepreneur or someone that doesn't have the stomach to just take all that responsibility on themselves can now participate in to increase their income because all the financial books in the world try to get you to save, sacrifice, delay, defer, budget, and that just takes extraordinary amounts of discipline and energy. Mm -hmm. And if we're in shrinking-based thinking that's about restriction instead of production, that is a harmful place to be. Mm -hmm. Instead, I'd like people to think about how they can expand their means, because we've all heard to live within our means, which usually thinks, uh, let's have life suck. Let's cut out good things that we enjoy. And you know what? After meeting you, I just enjoy finer things in life. Uh, my dad showed me boxed wine when I was young. You showed me bottled wine and uh, not only just any bottles, you know, and then you showed me dark chocolate. My, I grew up on milk chocolate. All of a sudden, those things, a luxury once enjoyed becomes a necessity. But the key is, yes, it's important to live within your means, but continually seek to expand your means. Because if I'm telling you to pinch pennies to save 10% of your income, and then try to get through Herculean efforts, once again, 10% return, which is really hard to get for the majority of people in today's world that don't own a business, that's 10% of 10%. But if instead we figured out, what are your best qualities? What are the things and skills and abilities you have that you could cultivate and grow and then you invest back into yourself. It doesn't show up on a piece of paper initially and that's the tough thing. When I put money in an investment like a mutual fund or a savings account or a certificate of deposit, I get a statement. When I invest into my own skills, my own abilities, I'm now relying more on myself, which can be a scary thing. But at the same time, it's gonna take a little bit longer to pay off. But if it does, imagine if I increase my income by 25%. That's 25% of 100%. Expanding our means is so critical, and as soon as we forget to do that, or we start shrinking because retirement's around the corner, or we stop thinking about enhancing our skills, we are in a disruptive time and place. Before, you could have the same skill for 20, 30 years. Now there's people that maybe learned to drive, but now there's driverless vehicles coming out. They're gonna have to have a new set of skills, and this is the toughest part. The toughest part and the crux of society comes down to this thing right here that if we are dependent upon an income and that is what's going to put food on the table or take care of our family, it is super difficult to make decisions that are the right decisions in the long term due to that scarce feeling in the short term. As a matter of fact, to go deeper in this, mm -hmm. this is why great and even good people do bad things. Mm -hmm.